Today I'm going to present you a possible mechanism for compact super earth and I think I will surprise you with my first slide <laughs> <laughs> where you can see the orbital distance in astronomical unit, the mass in Jupiter mass, is the planet of the solar system, Jupiter, the Earth, and all blue uh, cycles represent an exoplanet that has been detected. And so I'm interested in this population, super Earth, that do not exist in our solar system. We don't have planets of this range of mass here. And in addition, I'm not only interested in super Earth, but in compact system of a super Earth, such as Kepler 11. I want to understand how we can form such a compact system of bodies that have at least the mass of the Earth. And in the rest of my talk, I will try to produce these systems. So first of all, I will present the code I use to try to produce this system. I use an n-body code, Mercury, from Chambers. And I implement a very simple disk model, a 1D disk model, where I put the density profile as a power law. I use an opacity table, and I uh, compute the temperature profile by solving the energy equation. And with this disk, I, uh, I add the eccentricity and inclination damping by the gas disk, and also the migration caused by the disk using the torque formula from Potter Cooper 2011. So basically, you can have in a disk, depending on some conditions, you can have a zone, a specific zone that we call conversion zone, that will attract planets in this region. That means that if a planet is inside, she will migrate outward toward this location, and if it's outside, she will migrate a bit inward and stop there. So just to emphasize this point, a very simple simulation in this disk, a planet here at 4 AU, and through time, this planet will migrate and stop at the conversion zone. And in the meantime, its eccentricity will get damped, and so the, the orbit will circularize. But what will happen if you put several planets in the system? To understand this, I have to go into more details about the migration of planets. We can split the total torque uh, exerted by the disk on the planet into two parts. The first part is the Lindblad torque coming from the blue region here. And it generally causes inward migration. And the co-rotation torque coming from the green region here can cause either inward or outward migration. And so the sum of these two torques can cause inward or outward migration. But we can understand here that the key for outward migration is the co-rotation torque. And Beach and Clay in 2010 showed that when the planet gets eccentric, this co-rotation zone, this horseshoe region, is modified by the eccentricity. And since the co-rotation torque comes from this region, this torque is also modified by the eccentricity of the planet. And so when a planet gets eccentric, its co-rotation torque is damped. It's attenuated from the nominal value. See also the poster by Stefan van Dijk about this uh, effect. He studied in, uh, in detail uh, the effect of the eccentricity in hydro simulations. And uh, why do we interest in this phenomenon? Because we know that in disk, the eccentricity is quickly damped. And so uh, orbits quickly get circular. If we put here two planets, the key is mean motion resonance. They will migrate towards the same region in the disk, and at some point they can encounter mean motion resonance. So if you have planets in mean motion resonance, they act as a whole system. And if they are not in resonance, they act as single planets, and they will see the, the, mean, the, the conversion zone. Sorry. So here you have one mean motion resonance, and it's re really quick here, but in this region of time, they start to migrate as a system inward. The, the resonance broke, and they act again as single planets. This one migrates towards the conversion zone, and this one again also towards the conversion zone. Another resonance that broke, same problem. And here, they catch in a 5 to 4 mean motion resonance. And, uh, as a system, they migrate inward because each time you have a resonance, the eccentricity goes up, and you have this effect I showed earlier. When the eccentricity gets high, the co-rotation torque is damped, and the planets tend to migrate inward from the position they were. 
and here you have a stable condition where you have a whole system, a mean motion resonance, eccentricity that keeps high, even if the leak still damps the eccentricity, the mean motion resonance sustains the eccentricity to a non-zero value. And here you have the planets that stay here for the rest of the simulation. But here it's really simple. There are two planets, no collisions, no chaos. It's not really interesting. With a more realistic disk, we get this. So here I start with random mass, random position. And each cycle represents a collision. You see in color the three most massive planets in the system. You see they grow in mass through collisions. You have migrations that seems to go inward. But if you look in details, you will see here subsystems that are in mean motion resonance and that migrate inward. Here it's a bit different, but the point here is to see that it's quite difficult to see how to understand the end of the simulation. And to understand this, I have to show you the effect of the disk on the planets with this diagram that looks like a wave, if you want to see one. Uh, this migration map shows the effect of the disk on the planet depending on its position in some image axis in astronomical unit and its mass in Earth's mass. So basically, if it works, if it works, okay, uh, you have one planet that starts here at the beginning and that will migrate outward and stabilize at the uh, zero torque zone here, the black line. The black line represents a zero migration zone where the disk doesn't exert any torque on the planet and so there is no migration anymore. The same with another planet that we migrate inward and stop at the black line. And now if you imagine a more complex situation where two, there are two planets, one will migrate outward, one will migrate inward, and we imagine that at some point they will collide. With this collision, we will have a more massive body that will have a bigger mass. She will be shifted in a higher position in the diagram and she will migrate outward. If we apply this diagram to the final state of my simulation, I have a planet at around 15 AU that is on the zero migration zone and that is stable in the end of the simulation. The yellow tiny one near 18 AU is here, but we should expect that we, she will migrate inward, but she is trapped into mean motion resonance with a bigger one, and so she stays here in a stable position only because there is a big one that keeps her migrate inward. The inner system, it's quite the same thing, unless there is more planets than outside. Uh, to understand more what's inside, here is a comparison with the inner system and Kepler-11 I showed earlier. So here we have five planets very close from the Earth star. And the main difference between Kepler-11 and my simulation is that there is mean motion resonance here. And we do not observe mean motion resonance in Kepler-11 or other compact system. The main reason for that is that in the end of my simulation, I still have the gas disk. I still have to understand the effect of the disk participation for the, the surviving of my uh, system. But it, uh, I'm still uh, working on this one. And the other point I want to emphasize is the fact that the outcome of my simulations are high, highly sensitive to the migration map, to the disk parameters. And in the last slides, I will uh, show you the effect of density in a very simple case. So here I take a disk with parameters. I do not change the parameters of the disk. I only change the total mass of the disk. The rest is constant. I keep the same density profile. I only change the total mass. And you will see that the shapes of the migration map will change deeply. Some will shrink. Some will start to disappear. And in the end, we get the whale I showed earlier. So basically, I can form compact system about super Earth, but I still have the gas disk in the end, so I still have to understand the effect of this dissipation. With the same model, I can also produce uh, Jupiter candidates. That means that if I had um, gas accretion 
I can hope that with this uh, planetary core, I will form Jupiter-like planets, but uh, I still have to check that. And in addition, the, um, the outcome of the simulation are really sensitive to disk parameters. And this is only a short example with density, but with a lot of parameters of the disk, you will have huge discrepancies in the migration map and thus in the, in the, posi in the final po sorry in the final position of the planet in the end. And here I will show you uh, what I'm working now. I'm working on turbulence. That will, uh, maybe this will have a consequence on uh, mean motion resonance especially. I have already done some simulations. Photo evaporation, to see the effect of photo evaporation on the, the system. The effect of gas accretion to study the uh, gas giants. And also, I would like to study in the future the volatile content of my planets because I, at first I know the position of the snow line, so I, w I could check the composition of my uh, final planets knowing what they are composed of from these initial conditions. And if you only want to keep only one thing for my talk, just keep in mind that if you take one planet, she will fill the conversion zone, but if you put several planets in there, they will migrate to the same location, they will put themselves into mean motion resonance, and they will not stay at the conversion zone. So multiple planets will not stay at conversion zones, they will migrate a bit inward from this position. Thank you. Okay. So we have an opportunity for some questions for Christoph. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, so you have a microphone. I was wondering if you could explain the shape of your whale. Do you understand why you, know, uh, you get a whale and why you get that little fluke, it's little quite dorsal fin on the back? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite complicated because uh, in this shape, you have uh, first the effect of uh, several time scales on the co-rotation torque. So you have the liberation uh, time scale, the time the planet makes to make the horseshoe, the the time uh, for to make the horseshoe uh, orbit for um, a fluid element, the time to make the U-turn around the horseshoe region, and the time to I don't know that was short time, but I never remember this one. And uh, the, there's a competition between these three time scales that have an effect on the value of the rotation torque, but. It's not as simple as that because in this one you have the opacity profile that, I, that has a huge effect on the correlation torque. And in this uh, diagram I use, uh, I do not use opaci opacity laws with uh, polar laws. I use an opacity table that is uh, points for several values of density and temperature. So it's really difficult in this case, the shape of the wave. Uh, it's just down here, sorry. Uh. Um, I have a question about the collisions. <laughs> um, <laughs> go figure. Um, but um, my question is that when, when you have these embryos that, that collide, or the planets mm -hmm. collide, um, you are only allowing them to go in one direction, right? They, they are only allowed to merge and get bigger. Yes. And, what, and I just want to know, because I have no intuition about this at all, what would happen if they don't? If they don't? If they don't get bigger, if they don't merge, if they, if they disrupt or if they erode. Ah, okay. You have giant impacts, right? So, mm -hmm. um, but I have no idea what would happen to the whale. <laughs> what happens to the whale? Uh, <laughs> the whale is not uh, sensitive to... Uh, no, but... <laughs> <laughs> No, but <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> for, for the... What happens to the planets? Yes, for the planets... <laughs> With respect to the whale. <laughs> uh, it's an upper limit in my case, because yeah. I only merge and make a bigger one. So I would assume that in this case, you would produce maybe less massive planets than uh, the two... It's typically the sum of the two mass. In the oh, I think it would just body. increase your diversity. I'm not so sure that it would necessarily mean you'd always get lower mass. Um, for yeah, it's just something for you to think about. No, oh, it is not taken into account, yes. 
Any other questions? I will, so let's say, thanks Christoph for showing us. So some of you went whale watching yesterday and now we get to go whale watching again. So thank you.